Throws the ball in the end zone. So it is frustrating. There's coverage and there's an interception. Well, obviously frustrating loss. Oh, BYU's being blanked. If I had the answer, I would have figured that out by now. <laughs> Probably threw the ball too much. Picked off again. Really frustrated. I know where we sit, and I know how to get fixed and, and how to improve. Well, on Monday, BYU announced that it had relieved Ty Detmer as offensive coordinator. This season, the Cougars were in the bottom seven in the nation in scoring offense. But was it Ty's fault? Was he a scapegoat? Dick Harmon of the Deseret News stopped by the KSL studio to help us better understand what's going on in Provo. All right, Dick Harmon, the news came down on Monday. Were you surprised that it came down so quickly and not giving Ty the rest of his contract? I was surprised that it came down Monday after a win, but on, on the other hand, I could see after the season, after the losses, after the, uh, the abysmal uh, performance by the offense that they needed to do something. I didn't know that it would be that quick, and I thought that maybe there would be more discussion about it or maybe Tom Holmo or Kalani come out and talk a little bit about Ty Detmer and, uh, and maybe some kind of a send-off. Everybody asked me, why didn't it work? Was it Ty? Was it the players? What? What's in your opinion? Well, I think it was a perfect storm. I, I think if you look at the injuries that they went through, I've never seen anything like that. If you were, if you were to take uh, Troy Williams, uh, Utah, and uh, the quarterback um, Huntley. Huntley, and then you go down to your third guy, and you don't have him, and you go down to your fourth guy, and then you start him, and then you go to your running backs, and you have Zach Moss, and he's not there. You go down. Who's your second? Shine. 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 Was injured at the beginning. McCormick. Okay. We get okay, what you you're through, saying. You go right down. Go to number six. Yeah. Okay. Are they in a bowl game? So there was a lot of things that I haven't seen before as far as injury to this team. And it was a young team to begin with when they opened up the season. Well, don't you think that Kalani and Tom Homo, the athletic director, would take that into consideration, all those injuries? and? saying, okay, let's give it one more crack. There had to be something else. Well, I, I, think, I think that it came to the point when you look up in the stands and you're seeing 47,000 people there, you're seeing the student body not show up, you're maybe getting some calls from boosters, you're feeling the pressure, your brand's being hurt, you need to do something to make a move. So I can understand that they make a move. The science of football says that when you have a season like that, a coordinator's got to pay the price. And I think that uh, Ty paid the price of that. I still think he could be salvageable. Really? I do. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a case where Ty just hadn't had that experience and was overwhelmed? Or do you think, like you said, it was a perfect storm? Uh, I think that that's another part of the storm. His staff, uh, some of them had not been in coaching uh, before they got the job. Um, Mike Empey, who I think is a great offensive line coach, had been out of the business for, you know, 10 years. Uh, Reno Mahi, uh, NFL player but hadn't coached before. Ben Cahoon had been called back. He was in the medical profession. Um, that may have been a, a part of it. But I've talked to players, Rod, who told me after week three, we are not doing what Ty has asked us to do. And he, he wasn't trying to point fingers, but he said there are some people that were just simply not doing Players. Players were not performing and executing the things that had been taught, the things that they understood, and they were going over. It was, it was a little maybe either too hard for them or they weren't getting it or they weren't good enough to get in the position that they needed to to perform. Okay, that being said, you look ahead. They've got to get an offensive coordinator here rather quickly because everybody's out recruiting right now and the offensive guy's not knowing if they have a job when they come back. Oh, absolutely. Um, in fact, the guys are out recruiting, uh, you know, right now. They're spread across the, the country trying to get some of those things done. A couple of things about BYU. They don't do it quickly. If they had somebody in mind, then that, bush, that, that would have been pushed, and they would have them on staff. They'd have this thing going right now. So they really are maybe opening it up, uh, taking a look at people. They may have somebody in mind. They're going to go two different ways. They're either going to get a sage guy like Utah did with Dennis Erickson mm -hmm. and come in and have him build a staff and maybe use some staff that are there, including Detmer. Or they're going to go with a young guy, maybe like Paul Peterson at Snow College. You could bring in uh, Kevin McGiven, who just got fired at o Oregon State, mm -hmm. former BYU. Utah State. Uh, wow, as well. up, up at Weber State, you got Fessy Sataki, and maybe that last name might not get him a real true consideration. But yeah. his offense uh, threw for 600 yards on the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, he, he'll be playing in the playoffs. I'm going down there to see your city against SUU. He's a candidate. You go down the line, there, there are people out there, but the, there is not a great list of people that is deep that can fit into the BYU situation. Aaron Roderick, former co-offensive coordinator at Utah, former BYU player. Talk about him. What are your thoughts with that? 
You know, there's a lot of people that question whether Aaron would be right for that job since he was released by Kyle at Utah. But he's been hanging around as a consultant at BYU. And I think, from what I know of Aaron, both as a person, as a coach, as a recruiter, having been in the Pac-12, uh, mm -hmm. making game plans, game planning, things like that, he, he would be very good. And I think he's a guy, like some others, that would look at Ty Detmer and says, you know what? Um, I'd like to have him on my staff to co coach quarterbacks. Yeah. In fact, even do it like Norm Chow and uh, Roger French w back in the day. They both were co-offensive coordinators. I don't yeah. think title, uh, titles mean so much mm -hmm. as they do roles and effective input into it. Okay, uh, Norm Chow, I know you probably don't want me to ask you this, but he was spotted around town and uh, around the program last week. Uh, Norm had made a visit to Provo and to campus for the first time in 18 years, right before this last team went week. to Hawaii last week. Are you reading anything into that? I think I could read a lot into it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if Norm would take that, but it, is, it goes with the theory that I'm talking about bringing in a sage person, yeah. you know, with a young staff and helping them through some of the hurdles that they have, um, you know, some of the challenges they may have had, somebody with a lot of contacts, uh, somebody who's experienced and knows what BYU is all about. Norm Chow hadn't even seen the new practice facility or the new really? student uh, offices where the coaching staff is. Seems kind of odd he would just show up a week before they made a change. It does seem odd, but it was good to see mm. him back. <laughs> makes, you, makes you go, hmm. Uh, Ty Detmer, uh, what's your gut feeling? Do you think he's going to stick around or is he going to go back to his ranch uh, in Texas? Well, <clears throat> here's what I think. I, it's unfortunate that you go to get Ty Detmer. You ask him to come off the ranch. You recruit him to come to your university. You want to use his name, his brand, his experience. You understand he's not that experienced of a head mm -hmm. coach. You put him in a position. You don't let him recruit, play any of the athletes that he's recruited. Yeah. That I can recall, I don't think any player there was somebody that he recruited for the system that he wanted to put in there. Okay, so where do you go from here now? Well, I, I, I think you don't cut him back and send him to the ranch. The face of your football team. I'm getting the feeling that you're not for this move, you don't think it should have happened now. Well, I understand why it happened. Sure. I'm sad that it did happen. Yeah. I've known him since he was in high school, yeah. uh, and I think he has great value still. If they could just borrow his brain, it would be a great value <laughs> yeah. for any coaching staff. And you got other, all the other offensive coaches, too, that are out recruiting, just waiting to see if they're going to have a job when they come back. Uh, will this happen in the next week, two weeks, a new offensive coordinator? I don't know about the timetable, but the early signing date is coming up uh, in January, a few weeks away, and I think they, they must they should have somebody in place okay. for that because there's a lot of recruits that are waiting to see what happens. You got Tanner McGee uh, out at Centennial High School in California, the best drop back yeah. pass for Mormon kid. You got Zadok uh, Dinkelman that just uh, finished the 4A playoffs in Texas, nephew of Ty, Ty Dimmer, Dimmer, yeah. and he doesn't know what he's going to do. Okay, well, it's going to be interesting uh, coming up in the short term. Dick, you look awesome, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me.